All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. And without any further ado, here is the Voice of Doom. All right, hello everybody, thanks. Thanks for everything. Um, I wanted to do another episode because I have insomnia, so I'm going to just try to talk about this. Um... Let's see. The subject basically today is going to be the history of politics uh, in recent history, I guess the late 20th century till present. And followed by that, I'm going to try to do a little comedy thing about uh, phrases I hate. But we'll see. I want to get everything done in like 12 minutes to 15 because I know people don't really want to pay attention for very long. And also, you know, there's other things to click on, so I got to get it going. History of politics. Well, the way I look at it is it, everything led up to what we're doing now. Okay. When I was a kid in grade school, was Vietnam going on. I thought I was going to have to go to war because it didn't seem to want to end. Time goes slower when you're, you know, eight. So I grew up with kind of a feeling of doom anyway. Uh, by the time I really got into politics, it was by accident because I had to go, well, I didn't have to. I wanted to visit my aunt for the summer. And it just so happened that her favorite hobby is watching Watergate hearings. And hearings back then were real hearings. They're not like what we see now. That's totally different back then. And so I watched the Watergate hearings about 12 hours a day for the whole summer. So I kind of remember that. Now, Nixon wasn't great. He did a lot of bad things. He probably wasn't even blamed for the worst things he's done. But by today's standards, he was, uh, like, elder statesman. Much better than what we have now. But he did bad things. The things he did caused a lot of harm. Really bad. Cambodia turned out to be a disaster. But be that as it may, I watched the Watergate hearings, and I watched... I couldn't tell who were Republicans and who were Democrats. Because they all hated what was happening. They were all livid. They were all angry. So this was real fun and it wasn't just a bunch of grandstanding. They asked questions. They had, a, they had witnesses on the stand for days and they questioned them for hours. One senator would question a guy for like, we were talking to the assistant to the vice chairman of the agency of such and such and you know we're going to talk to him for three days, you know, 24 hours. And they questioned him for, you know, one, one senator would question him for two hours. At any rate, they were real hearings, and they were a little bit boring, but you always got a little bombshell now and again, like, Oh, we recorded everything in the White House. <laughs> well, that's nice. Um, be that as it may, I grew up with that kind of stuff. By the time I was in high school, everybody hated Republicans. Everybody hated Republicans. No one was going to vote for a Republican, so we voted for a Democrat. Great. Now, <clears throat> the reason that we haven't totally blown ourselves up already is because there's been an understanding uh, in government up until a few decades ago. And that understanding was that the Democrats were going to turn into a party for the people, and a party for the oppressed, and a party for the downtrodden, and they were going to help the common man. And the Republicans were going to play the role of the dirty rich pigs. And the Democrats will always be in charge of Congress. And that's just the way it is, and that's the way it ever will be. And the Republicans were happy to play the game, and we'll get our little things on the side here and there, we'll get a few things we want. And let him be president now and again, but you're not going to run Congress. So that went on for about 40 years, and I guess the Democrats thought that they were never going to be out of power again. 
And then 94 came along. And that was when the people had the utter audacity, unmitigated gall. How dare they? How could they do that? They voted Republicans in to Congress. They took over both houses. So then all the masks came off and it was like overnight. Overnight the media said, what's going on here? How could they do such a thing? How could they possibly think that the Democrats are bad? How could they possibly vote for those rich, greedy, corrupt, you know, swine? I hate to use that word because that's Hunter S. Thompson. Um, so at any rate, we had the audacity to vote for Republicans. And that was the beginning of the end right there, 94 of November. Because the Democrats went, this isn't happening, this isn't real. We did not just lose Congress. Uh, that's not going to happen again. And so they proceeded to lie and cheat and steal constantly and brazenly and, you know, without expecting any punishment. It's just ridiculous. It started with 2,000. It's ridiculous. Oh, something's wrong, man. Those votes we cheated for didn't turn out right. That can't be right. They wouldn't vote for it in. We cheated for those votes fair and square. It makes a lot of sense. No, I started to realize they were cheaters. And liars. And the Republicans aren't really that much different than they were before. They're still playing little cowardly little games, not getting anything done. So they're useless. So that's the history of politics. That's how it's gotten to this tribalism. That's what I was talking about. The first reason for our woe. The first reason that we're at the abyss. Um, so I did that pretty quickly. Now I can get into my more lighter stuff. I'm all new to this. This is the second episode I've done, so pardon me if it's really, really like primitive. But here's phrases I hate throughout the years. Political. First phrase I hate is, I won't say hate. Just say phrases I loathe with a bloody passion. Um, first one is, we need a full investigation. I've been hearing that since I was five. They've never investigated anything. Usually means they're going to have one of their hearings, you know, which aren't like the old days. It's like, you got five minutes to speak. And they spend ten minutes arguing about some guy stealing 30 seconds from his speech. It's, you know, asinine. Ridiculous. But anyway, yeah, we need a full investigation. That's a great phrase. I love when I hear that because then I know nothing's going to happen. And rest assured, I don't have to bother getting a newspaper. Another phrase that's really annoying. We need to get to the bottom of this. Not going to happen. First of all, you'll never find bottom. Never. I keep thinking we couldn't go lower than this, but yeah, we find a way. And on the second place, they never have gotten to the bottom of anything. I mean, what do you think? Government ever gotten to the bottom of anything? I don't know. Can't think of anything. So, there is no bottom, is the bottom line. Another phrase that's irritating, extremely irritating. Someone's got to be held accountable. That is such an irritating thing to say, because then you know full well that nothing's going to happen to anybody. And everybody knows that certain people are special. They can walk around with heads hanging from their freaking belt. They can get away with it. It's just a matter of perception. It's really weird. What's another phrase that really is stupid? Oh, it's not really a phrase. It's just they started doing this little phrase back in the Obama era. I think it started back then. I hate it when they say that. They always say, make no mistake. It's a really irritating statement. Like, 
Yeah, we're out here making mistakes. We're stupid. You're doing everything right. You're not making any mistakes, but we'll, you know, okay, all you people, make no mistake, and then they'll say something totally asinine. Like, make no mistake, we will be a presence in Afghanistan. You know, make no mistake, and it's like, well, I'm not making a mistake. You guys are making a mistake. And then on the other side, when they want to put themselves up on a pedestal, here's another phrase that's really good. I want to be clear. They say it all the time now. They always say it right before they totally duck, you know, questions, obfuscate, confuse you about something weird that has nothing to do with what they were talking about. I want to be clear. Love that phrase. So, yeah, that's kind of like the comedy, I guess you call it. What else can I say? We've got a few minutes, so I'll kind of intertwine my history a bit. Like I said, it was White Bread City when I was a kid. I won't talk about what race we were. We were horrible people. And uh, I was pretty much a Democrat, I guess you'd say. And then I stayed that way. I really didn't like Republicans because of the Contra Iran thing. I didn't really care for that. And Nixon just their whole attitude, but I changed, I think did I become, yeah, I became kind of an anarchist nihilist for a while because I had a punk record store and so I was kind of more on the left side, I kind of wanted to find a new way of, you know, dealing with the country and communism seemed okay until I started studying it and I realized this ain't this ain't gonna work. This is stupid. But it was fun to be, you know, a commie for a while. Then I moved to L.A. and Clinton came along and I liked him at first because I didn't know anything. And then I realized I didn't know anything so I started reading and after I was done reading I didn't like Clinton that much. I didn't like Democrats at all because I realized they sold us up the river by wasting tons and tons of money over nothing. And they were in charge of Congress all those years up till 94, so you can't say it wasn't us. The Democrats. I mean, it was the Republicans. You know, it's ridiculous. Who are they? You know, what difference does it make? They both go, it was these guys. So, I didn't go to Republican, even though I've never voted for a Democrat since 92. Uh, more libertarian, classical liberal, maybe, fiscal conservative, that's where I'm at now, that's what happens in 45 years, uh, but I can't say I didn't try it all, and I, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt, so, you know, if they do something good, I'll say so, even if this, whatever that is in office right now does something good, I mean, I'll give them credit for it, I don't see how that could possibly happen. This is by pure accident. Um, but that's my history. I can be more detailed later. I'll let it go now. It's 13 minutes and 36 seconds, so... I know, it wasn't as good as the last show. Which I kind of liked. I don't know. I hope you guys did. But I'll get better. Gotta hone up my rapier wit. You know what I mean? Get a little more sarcastic. <laughs>